Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video, and today we're taking a look at our predictions for the year 2024. Was the year 2023 the correction year the bicycle industry needed? Or unfortunately, are there more dark times to come coming up foreshadowing for this 2024 year? In today's video, we'll be talking about what I think will happen to certain companies to do to combat against this downtime. Uh, we'll talk about some other companies that I think might run into some financial troubles down the road. And then also just talk about my opinion on the cycling industry as a whole on what people can do to kind of help combat this um, and kind of get through it. Because all we really need to do is hunker down. Everyone talks about how bad inflation is, but this is the time where people start to go ahead and race to the bottom. And if you think inflation was a bitch, uh, just wait until you guys meet deflation when everyone just starts to slash prices. And then your inventory goes from one number that you had with all this inventory and immediately goes down to nothing because of the fact that you're competing against your own manufacturer's prices. So we'll talk about that in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And by the way, guys, I don't enjoy talking about this type of stuff. Uh, I am in the cycling industry. This stuff affects me directly, but also I feel that is if I don't talk about it, it's not gonna not happen. So I just try to make these videos to go ahead and educate you guys. I see comments all the time. People are like, oh yeah, screw the cycling industry. It's corporate greed, you know, we're just, talking about this on a whole spectrum. And this is not just the cycling industry's little own niche. This is pretty much the whole world of like outdoor sports, truck prices, home prices, everything in general. 2024 coming up is an election year. Um, politics have a lot to do with people spending money. Uh, also wars and everything like that. The, just big events in the world have a lot to do with people spending money. So um, that will also directly affect what happens if something happens in 2024. So. We will see what happens in the future. But yes, I don't enjoy making these videos and talk about the downfall of companies at all. I'm just here to give you guys educa educational purposes and um, and just kind of make people more aware of it. So in these crazy years of 2023, we have seen big name companies go under business or out of business. They file for bankruptcy. We have seen big name companies like Trek go ahead and compete with online direct -to consumer prices by lowering their price points of bicycles to match that of what the others like Canyon or Factor are doing as well. Um, we have seen other bicycle name uh, manufacturers like Giant be a huge name competitor to direct consumer pricing. Everyone always says that it's corporate greed or that it's uh, the bicycle prices are way too high, they need to come down. But even if they got down to whatever price that you were complaining about, would you buy a bicycle right now in this world that we live in today? Would you go out and spend six grand? Let's say you had a set budget on a bicycle, would that be the compelling argument to go ahead and buy out there? If the corporate that you want to buy the bicycle from, and you go, ah, that Trek Madone's too much money. They're, they're trying to make too much money. And they just said, okay, what price would you pay for it? And if it was realistically, would you buy it? That's really the question we have to ask ourselves. So uh, there have been a lot of people combating that in 2023. But for 2024, I think that we're going to see the trend uh, happen here. We're going to see these bicycles kind of go ahead and start to get a little bit lower in pricing. Um, specialized, I sell specialized. I would like to see specialized bicycles pricing come down and kind of match like a Trek bicycle or like a giant bicycle. Um, specialized is kind of always known to be the industry leader, um, the industry standard, but right now their prices are very difficult even to the Trek Madones and even to the giant bicycles out there. So before pandemic prices, a Tarmac SL7 S Works was $12,000. Um, right now the Tarmac SL8 with inflation and cost of living, everything like that, the price is 14 grand at a time. Pretty much every single bicycle out there that was top tier was 14 grand. We saw it on the Trek Madone. We saw it on the Scott foil, which is $16,000. We saw on Cervelo's, I think at some point were around that 13, five, $14,000 price point. Um, people are starting to bring those prices back down to reality. And again, still that is not the biggest the, the game changer that's going to fix these companies um, because those people that are buying those bikes for 14 grand, the 14,000 to $12,000 isn't the real like buyer, buyer be sold, you know, like definitely it helps, but that person who has 12 grand definitely has 14 grand. But I think they're going to try to market correct themselves and try to put them in a place where they can go ahead and do this. Now, what that means for retailers like myself and other people who sell these bicycles, um, even specialize themselves if they do this. Let's say in 2025, they release the, new specialized S-Works Tarmac SL8 with a new SRAM Red or the Durace DI2 with a new color. And they lower this bicycle down to 12.5, which I think would be a great market correction for price. 
that automatically deflates our product's value. So every single Tarmac S-Works SLA that I have in stock in my building that I bought for the price of 14 grand, automatically I lose $1,500 off that bicycle right off the top. And then in this market where I'm not doing it personally, but I have been priced, competed out of a sales recently. I've heard stores around my area really doing low ball prices on all these bicycles, um, S-Works Pros and everything like that. Uh, people are definitely coming due, bills are coming due, prices are coming due, and I think people are just trying to recoup their money from their inventory. So automatically we're in a bidding war now from 14 grand down to 12.5, and then I have to compete with the current market where it is right now. So again, like I mentioned at the start of the video, if we thought inflation was gonna be a problem, deflation would be a problem to go ahead and counteract this because I will probably bet my bomb dollar coming up in 2024. I will still have some s for s in stock. I will still have some s Late Pros because I am very comfortable and confident with my inventory I ordered. I ordered pretty smartly and I didn't do a big order like a lot of other people did. So I'm not eager to, I don't need to blow the doors off it whenever I sell a bicycle. I'm comfortable with where my, my prices are. And, um, but that will be, that will be a, how do you say this? It's almost like because of the fact that I didn't go to the grocery store when I was hungry and didn't place a massive amounts of orders for Tarmac SLAs when they first opened up. And I only got a select few and kind of what I could afford and happy with that we're going to be penalized because of the fact that now I'm competing with a bunch of people who did order a, tar a lot of Tarmac Escalades. And now we're having to compete with them, selling off these bicycles, pushing them for cost or half close to cost, whatever it is, just to go ahead and get money for rent or pay their employees or whatever it is. So uh, I have been in this situation, not only with other products I sell, but also like I did a bicycle build out for a custom frame. I had a SRAM Red group set in store. I only had one in stock, which I'm very happy about. I'm very happy about that. But I got price matched by someone who showed me a price on backcountry, which they have an overstock. And I couldn't compete with it. So again, I'm, we're kind of getting penalized because of the fact that there's a race to a bottom of other people trying to clear out old inventory to go ahead and get and recoup some of that money. So not only is it going to see massive amounts of blowout sales, but also the retailers who did order smart will be affected by this because they can't sell off their product as well. But Tarmac Pros as well, they brought down from last year from nine grand to 8,500, which I think is still a pretty decent price. But I think Back in the day before pandemic, these prices of a Tarmac Pro, Tarmac SL6 Pro Disc with CL50 wheels and Altaker DI2 11 speed was like $6,800. So <clears throat> if for any reason, if they really want to correct this price, if you bring this down to 7.5, you would be getting a huge name brand bicycle with dealer support um, with a great group set at 7.5. You're still not at Madone level. For 65, if you can get this bicycle, Altegra DI2 with Revolve wheels for $6,500, then you're doing a great price correction, but still, how many sales does that drive in? And even at that point, you're also lowering the value of your products. The Expert as well, when this bicycle first came out, um, it didn't have the carbon wheels on there. It didn't have, it had the SRAM rival, but I think this bicycle at like 5250 would be a great price point. It's a win-win for the consumer. It's a win-win for the manufacturer as well. Um, Giant will probably, if, if other stores or other big name brands like, uh, specialized Trek, Sky, everyone starts to go ahead and lower their prices in Cervelo, then obviously Giant will have to combat that and kind of go ahead and lower down their prices as well. Canyon, I think will stick right where they are. They already have enough, uh, they already have enough buyers and markets and demand and want, and their prices are absolutely insane. It's the first thing you think about whenever you're buying a new bicycles budget. So I don't think that Canon is going to change anything about that. The price for what you get is absolutely a great deal because they're a direct consumer. Trek as well, I think they did an absolutely outstanding job for a big name aero road bike that is a beautiful looking bicycle. Trek is a massively named corporation and they put out a bicycle for $6,500 with Altegrity at two. I think it's a really good job there. I think you, you, they did a really good job. And even for the top tier stuff with Durace on there, uh, 12,750 is where I said that I think the Tarmac SLH should be at. It'll be like 12,5. This doesn't come with a power mirror, yes, but if they went 12,5 without a power mirror, I think people will still be happy because I know people sometimes have either have power meter pedals or maybe they want to bring their own crank or whatever it is. Yes, people like power mirrors included on the bicycles, but majority of times, whenever they're looking at this kind of pedigree of bicycle, they usually have their own power meter come with it on top. 
Now, in terms of bicycle companies going under, like I know I mentioned before in 2023, we saw rib, uh, Wiggle and we saw um, Chain Reactions um, file for bankruptcy and kind of go under. Uh, there's been rumors and murmurs of other companies going under as well. Um, I don't think any big name bicycle brands are going to be hurting in terms of that. Yes, they'll do probably layoffs. Maybe they'll do correction in terms of pricing or maybe just batten down the hatches and really figure out what they need to do. But they are established well-known companies. Uh, the big name guys, Specialized, Giant, Trek, <coughs> Cervelo even. They they all do a really good job. Canes obviously out there as well. They're all growing, expanding. But um, what I do think is going to hurt is that once all these other companies like... So ever since SRAM and Shimano have been going direct to kind of dealer, like me, I'm a retailer. Uh, I have the good thing about my platform on YouTube and on Instagram, I have a ton of followers on Instagram is I have a bunch of individuals who reach out to me and speak to me all the time. Shop owners, riders, enthusiasts, mechanics, workers who are in this industry, not only in my area, but across the world, Europe, Africa, Australia, Canada. Um, literally I have people on the other side of the United States. We talk, I just love talking bicycles and industry talks about that. And they tell me their situation. I make a video talking about how bad the industry is. They'll come back and say how what they're doing over there as well. And either confirm or deny what's going on. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I hear a lot of my expectations or everything that I say in my videos. They're all confirming on their end, saying how slow they are. Or riders saying, oh, their local shop that they love to go to and always support closed down. Or um, their, their shop they used to ride out of closed down. Or, hey, I'm working at our shop and we cut so many employees. And I work for this big chain. and um, we're cutting back and it's, it's not looking good. I think they're running out of money and it's, it's very sad. I don't like to talk about that type of stuff. It's people's lives, it's people's life, careers, livelihoods, they have families and so that, but this is the people who I think will definitely be affected in 2024, even to come, uh, 2024, 2025, that 12 month, 18 month period is the small retailers like myself. Um, the big retailers, even, even big chains, you, everyone thinks these big chains like Mike Spike, some of that. Yes, they're massive chains and they have great investment backers, but at a certain point they might look at it and be like, well, this isn't making us money anymore. Let's go ahead and move out of here. Because when you have such a big business like that and paying for it, sometimes it makes better sense just to get rid of it. Um, also, companies like this, Holly, Quality, and JBI. Ever since SRAM and Shimano went direct to retailers like myself, I've been able to get better pricing from SRAM. Same with Shimano, we'd be able to get better terms. We can get um, preseason booking and stuff like that. Whereas HLC quality and JBI have been established for so long and they've been such a staple in the bicycle industry. This, these are the people that literally will, that help bicycles, help bicycle shops kind of be a bicycle shop without having to be in direct contact with a big name bicycle brand or have in contact with SRAM or Shimano. Let's say you're a small mobile kind of repair. You can open up an account with quality or JBI and have access to shop tools, bicycles, wheels, spokes, uh, cassettes, everything you need to go ahead and do in bicycle business, they are here. And these people have been in here for a very long time. But what happened during that whole pandemic time, a lot of good and a lot of bad. They were thriving. All these people were selling out units like crazy. And they were trying to meet up with demand like everyone was. Literally buying whatever they could. And yes, the writing was on the wall saying this is going to stop eventually. But they were unfortunately too big to not meet the demand. They literally still had people like me in stores saying, hey, we need more stuff. We need more stuff. So they're ordering just go ahead and fill their inventory plus the stuff that's being sold. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, out of a screeching hole, everyone's like, hey, cancel my orders. And unfortunately, these guys were all like, okay. Whereas these guys were like, no. So not only were we buying from these guys and these guys, SRAM and Shimano would get it first. They'd fulfill our orders. And then we say we don't need any more. And they get stuck with all this inventory. So they have a crap ton of not only just SRAM products, which I always talk about in videos. Uh, but they have a crap ton of everything. And I've heard this from shop people. I've heard this from industry people. And I heard this from friends. That they have SKUs of items, specific items, that are there five years deep. They can turn over that product item five years and they will finally run out of inventory on that for today's current market, which is crazy. Um, these places are not small by any means. During the pandemic, they were <clears throat> they're located all over the United States. But during these times, they were open up and they expanded warehouses because again, they were trying to keep up with this demand, but literally it's a parts facility. A ton of jobs being built here, a ton of everything being made here. 
and uh, but they're massive amounts of warehouse space. This is Qualities uh, inside warehouse, and they have four warehouses, I think, over here. HLC, I just did a video on HLC recently where they opened up a new warehouse, and then literally a year later, they had to close it down because it wasn't profitable. Massive new warehouse um, for HLC. And again, with JBI, same thing. Big, big warehouses. And also what I think is, so I don't like the wish design one, but I definitely think that, you know, I can see these kind of companies going out of, or, or filing for bankruptcy or whatever it is um, with one of these companies. Also, coming up with Pro's Closet as well. Pro's Closet, all these bicycle uh, certified used bicycle buyback things, they're buying used bicycles at the freaking height of it. And I know you guys must say, you, know, you talk about this all the time. That's because I hear about this all the time. Not only just from me, from my inside sources of like the bicycle industry, I have people who work for these places and reach out to me and say, hey, yeah, we have a ton of inventory uh, and nothing's moving. Not only are new bikes not moving, used bikes aren't moving, and they have a certain amount of money into those bicycles. They don't want to let go of them. And all of a sudden, it's just going to come to a point where they're crashing out crazy amounts of bikes. You go in a pro's closet, they have brand new bicycles on here uh, from dealers that not only are they buying used bikes from people, but they're getting good deals from like, let's say like a company like Look. I saw Look had two, 2024 bicycles on there on the pro's closet with a warranty on there. Like, so basically what's happening is Look is saying, hey, the pro's closet, we have a bunch of surpluses of bicycles. Would you guys want to buy some? And quality's like, or pros cost like, sure, we'll buy them for cost. They're like, cool, cost. So they're basically becoming like a look dealer. <coughs> I got a feeling that it's just going to be a big rug pulling out from the whole bicycle industry and shit's going to hit the fan. And if one of these big people, pros closet, JBI, quality, Holly, if one of these big guys goes down, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a sell off of inventory, fire sales everywhere. Uh, shit's going to hit the fan and it's going to be crazy, but those are my predictions. Let me know what you guys think. Um, what I recommend is keep cash on hand, order what you can. Don't go to the grocery store hungry Order smart. I have a video coming up where I'm talking about how we should even restock our store because there is not a conversation being had for entry level bikes right now. The only people that are really driving our store are the mid to high end bicycles. That two thousand dollar, that one thousand dollar price point customer has really stopped coming in. I think everything is just super tight, and that that's their budget right there. That customer is just trying to focus on roof over their head, bills being paid, meals for their family, and stuff like that. So uh, that customer for that one thousand, two thousand dollar bicycle is non-existent, and that used to be a massive inventory stock of our store. And we're thinking about restructuring our store in terms of maybe stocking more higher end stuff. Higher end stuff, lower stock quantity. So let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully go into this 2024 together and we'll be keeping up with everything I'm saying. And I hope everything I say is wrong. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys leave a comment down below, leave a comment. I'll give you a little heart. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.